I first off, for folks that are new, I want to kind of explain how this process works. We only have a couple new people, but just to make sure people understand. Uh, one, this is really an opportunity where I'm going to share information with you all about what's going on at the school, um, really just to keep people abreast of what's going on. And then, obviously, I want uh, engagement with you all if you have questions and different things about the school. This isn't the forum to talk about specific teachers um, or specific situations with your child. Obviously, I want to know about those as well, um, but those are things that we do behind closed doors and have a conversation. So we don't want this to be a situation where we're talking about anything overtly specific in regard to your child um, or your teacher. But we do talk about global issues with the school, so this is the forum for that. Um, and what I do every single month um, is have a list of things to talk about, and then sometimes we hit all those things, sometimes we don't. Um, we also uh, post this on YouTube every single month to give you the opportunity to see it on your own time as well if you can't make it in the morning. Obviously this is not the most convenient time to do this, um, but we do try to make it available to all of our parents that they could access it when they want to as well. So we do uh, post all of our videos, um, even if you want to go back and look at last year, they are all available for you to look at if you'd like to. Um, I apologize for um, having to see me, but you can always kind of black out your screen and just listen to the voice if you have to. Um, I'd feel much more comfortable if that was the case. Um, just to kind of share some information, and then uh, Dr. Morrison is here today. He's the superintendent of the school, uh, the school system. Uh, this is not because it's our coffee chat. It's just a normally ske a normal uh, scheduled visit for him. It just happens to fall dead on when we were doing this, so I thought it would give you an opportunity to kind of have a conversation with him as well. So I'm, gonna st I'm starting a little early to kind of hit a few items, but then I want to give him the opportunity to kind of introduce himself to you and really give you a little forum to have a conversation with uh, Dr. Morrison. Um, he won't be here for too long probably, but um, if you have any burning questions about something going on in the system, if you saw something in the board meeting last night that piqued your interest that you had questions about or anything really that ties into our school system, it would be an opportunity to kind of begin that discussion at, at that time. Um, just to kind of share a little bit about what's going on at the school right now, um, our size, we are at 1,100 students, which is the largest we've ever been as a school. Uh, we are projected to be probably closer to 1083, I think was our number, um, but we are at 1,100. Um, our projections were close in most areas. Right now, if, we're, if I would say we have two areas that are the most stressed, it would be first and second grade. Um, they're not over their limits. Um, the maximum we can have in K3 classrooms is 24 students, um, but they are almost to the max. Um, in first and second grade. So that was not part of the plan, um, but you can never really control where your students are gonna enroll at, and that we're over in both first and second grade right now. Um, kindergarten, we're about eight down, which is right around where it should be. I think we're in the 190s as a grade level, so those classes are right around 20 students in a class, which is a really good number. Uh, fourth and fifth also are really good numbers, right around 25 in a class. They can go as high as 29. Um, but those numbers are really good. Third grade is lo also looking good. Um, but so one and two are the two areas that we right now have the biggest stress in regard to class size, um, but we're still under our limits as we go from that regard. Questions about the student population in general? Um, demographic wise, we're not very diverse as a school, unfortunately. Uh, we're about 78% Caucasian. We have a small African American population, small Hispanic population. We do have English as a second language students at our school, uh, but they're not all generally Hispanic. We kind of have a potpourri of students that we deal with. We have an ESL teacher um, that works with that group of children both inside the class and outside the class, so they do get additional supports based on their needs. Um, what we have noticed uh, with a lot of our English as a second language students is that their families typically prefer immersion. Uh, because that is how they learn the language. Uh, so oftentimes our English as a second language parents will opt out of extra support services. Um, and we completely understand that we do try to still support those children in the general classroom, but just to kind of give you a general idea about that. Our free and reduced lunch numbers, which is basically your economically dis disadvantaged piece of your population, we're right around 22%, um, which is higher it's about the same as it was last year, higher than when this school opened. When the school opened, it was about 7%. Um, we are about average with other schools around us. Cornelius is right around the same number. Um, when you get to Davidson um, and 
Torrance Creek, they're much lower than we are. Barnett's much lower than we are. But Huntersville, Cornelius, and J.V. Washam are all right in that 22% range. Just kind of give you um, some demographic information about where we are. Our largest grade level right now is kindergarten. We have 10 classes of kindergartners, which is the largest we've ever been. Um, but like I said, our numbers are actually pretty good. Um, we didn't hit the number that we were expecting, so they're right around 20 in a class, which is a really good number for kindergarten. Um, in regard to our smallest grade level right now, it's seven. Um, so that kind of gives you an idea of our span in regard to our size. Uh, fourth and fifth grade are all out back in our mobiles, except for one fourth grade class that's on C Hall. But beyond that, the rest of fourth and fifth grade are outside. If you haven't had a chance to walk out to the back of our building yet, um, our mobiles are not actually in a bad situation compared to some schools. Um, they're very close to the facility. Um, so the only time it really becomes a real problem is when the weather is not cooperative. So when it rains, um, unfortunately, it's not a good situation. But beyond that, um, kids can get in and out of the building without a long walk. Um, kids can move from class to class without uh, long walks, and it, and it works pretty well. Um, it's just when we have inclement weather where we typically have uh, problems in that regard. Um, in regard to communication as a school, hopefully you have seen immediately that our teachers are over communicating with you. Um, if you haven't, please make me aware of that because uh, one of the things that we uh, have focused on a great deal over the six years I've been at this school is over communicating with parents and we try to do that from a variety of different mediums. That doesn't mean you have to be a part of all these mediums. Um, what our goal is is to try to create different options for families depending on what works for you as a family. So an example would be one thing is that we um, send a weekly email blast home to our families uh, to kind of let you know what's going on for the week, what's coming up, uh, and other general information. Uh, secondly, we have a Facebook page. If you're not a member of our Facebook page, I would strongly recommend it if you go on Facebook. If you don't, I'm going to go out of my way to go on Facebook. You're, you're going to get the information other ways. Um, but we do post information on there on a regular basis. Um, I'm the one posting it, usually, or one of my facilitators. Um, so it is a site that we will share information regularly. Um, so if, it is, if you're a regular user of that site, obviously it will be a way that you can get information. Um, last night we got our uh, approval from the Board of Education in regard to our media center being named after Miss Violet Washam who recently passed away um, and I posted that immediately on Facebook and on Twitter so parents could be aware of that. Um, we did start a Twitter page this year. Again, if you've never been on Twitter, you know, that's fine. I'm not promoting Twitter personally. I use it all the time. Uh, for educational information, but uh, if you are on Twitter regularly, we do post information on there. Um, a lot of our teachers have started to dabble with Twitter a little bit to, as a communication tool. So it is another tool that we try to use just to give parents options in that regard. Um, every week I also send home a what we call the Hawkeye. Part of that is PTO based where you get information from our parent teacher organization and the other part is from me where I will do a letter that typically ties into things that are going on in the schoolhouse plus um, I kind of blend in character information and different ideas in that regard that you can share with your students. Um, right now the most recent ones we've talked about um, the book Bucket Filling. Um, if you're not aware of it, the book's called How Full Is Your Bucket? It's by Tom Rath. Uh, it's actually an adult book originally. Um, and we've kind of taken it and, and melded it into our character plan for our school. Since we started using it, actually, they've come out with children's books. So we have children's books here at the school that we use to kind of introduce the program. The philosophy is quite simple. Um, it's how we interact with each other. You either fill people's buckets or empty people's buckets. Um, it is uh, something that I started with my staff as an assistant principal um, in middle school. But it's, it easily became something that was something that our kids latched on to pretty quickly in regard to um, it made complete and better sense to them that how we interact either can make you feel really good or really bad and it doesn't always have to be your words it could be body language and so on and so forth so we do preach that on a regular basis with our kids and, and any opportunity I get so you will not hear typically um, me talk about a character trait of the month though our system does have a character trait of the month I think still um, I try to integrate it in pretty much everything we do um, so we won't talk about this is the month of responsibility or this is the month of citizenship. I think citizenship should be happening every month, all day. Um, so we kind of focus on it from that perspective. So you'll kind of see that getting re-looped over and over and over again um, at the school. Um, so I think that's kind of how we, we've um, 
incorporated the communication. A couple other neat things that teachers have started to use this year um, is uh, several teachers have started using video as part of their weekly uh, email blast. So instead of sending it home uh, via email, uh, they are using video to try to share that. I know one teacher in particular has used it multiple times. Again, just a different medium. Um, we're just trying to use different ways to get information out. Um, and I think she's done a really good job of, of doing that. But that's another way you may see information coming home uh, in regard to explaining how different processes work. Uh, curriculum nights. You had a, an informal open house before school started. Now we have a formal curriculum night in September. Um, if you're a K-2 parent, that'll be on September 20th, and it'll start at 5.30. It is a really an adult event. Um, it's not something you're gonna wanna bring your child to unless you specifically have to. Um, they're gonna be talking about procedures and expectations in the classroom. They're gonna be talking about the curriculum in the classroom and things of that nature. So it would be probably pretty dry for a student. Um, Many parents think it's dry, so uh, it's, uh, it's an opportunity to kind of learn more about the specific things going on in your classroom beyond just having it in writing. You can ask elaboration questions, you can talk about whatever uh, the information is, but K-2 teachers will be working with their parents on the 20th. We're doing that with our 3-5 parents on the 27th, the week later, the same time, 5.30. Uh, we'll start each meeting with a brief video um, from our PTO president and myself, um, so you will report directly to your classrooms on that day. Uh, two years ago, we used to meet in the gym, um, and it just became <coughs> overwhelming, and it was very difficult to hear, um, and we tried last year to use the video approach, and it worked much more effectively. Um, so when you come in on those curriculum nights, if you're able to attend, um, we will have a little brief uh, video for you to watch about the PTO in uh, the classroom, which is a, a quieter, you know, smaller, more intimate setting. Uh, questions about curriculum night? Okay. Uh, other uh, interesting things going on. Hopefully, if you were here last year, you knew that we won a Jimmy Johnson uh, grant. Uh, Jimmy Johnson's foundation supports education across uh, the country. Uh, we were the only elementary school in North Carolina to win, uh, really thanks to our PTO and Ms. Walker, who's one of our parents, actually in the room. Raise your hand. Yes, um, she uh, truly was the driving force to us getting the grant, um, and we thought originally that we got a grant for $90,000, so we were exceptionally excited about it, um, but we found out there was a slight caveat to that where we were only going to get 45, it was a matching grant, um, but really our PTO um, and our parents overall just did a fantastic job, and within three months we were able to raise $45,000. Uh, it was helped a little bit by the fact that we hit another grant that I kind of took Miss Walker's grant and morphed it into another one and, and I hit it again. So we ended up getting $65,000 from really the Lowe's Corporation and Jimmy Johnson. Um, so we didn't have to raise as much as we originally thought we were going to have to. Um, but we have started to see the benefits of that already. Uh, two more phases of our playground were put in this summer. So they are up and running. The kids are truly enjoying that. Um, we do have more work to do though. There's a track that will be coming in eventually that will surround that area for kids to walk on or run on. Um, and there was also going to be a learning area out in that area as well. So uh, it is not at completion yet, and we will do something once it's completely done. Um, but we wanted to at least have the playground in place this, you know, for the start of the school year. So that is up and running and uh, ready to go. Also, we got sunshades um, you will see throughout our campus uh, that were part of that process, uh, really because we don't have any trees that are at the level where they can actually create shade because we're such a new school. Um, so we do have them on every single playground now, which has been nice uh, for a little shade break if you want to take that opportunity as, as a student. So um, that has been a really cool process and we're very proud of uh, being able to have that for our kids. And it's really been able to kind of allow us to meet our children's needs more, especially since we're at 1,100 students now versus I think 700 when the school opened up seven years ago. Uh, but just kind of, to follow up on that, we do have another really neat activity or another neat thing that I actually posted on Facebook last week. Um, but we had an Eagle Scout come in this summer and put up a really cool, really, it, we just initially started, his theme was a science area, um, but it's really just a learning area. If you walk behind our mobiles in the back of our building someday, if you walk around by the football fields around the back of the mobiles, you will see 
a basically a staged area with a cover over it, bench seating. Um, he's eventually going to have landscaping around it. Um, but it's just going to be another place where teachers can take students out of the general classroom and learn outside. Um, I think there's a misnomer traditionally that we have to be within four walls to teach kids. That's traditionally how we were taught. But I want to try to break down that a little bit and get teachers to kind of morph outside of their outside the box, I guess is the best way of explaining it, and go out there and learn in different environments. So when they have the opportunity, maybe do an experiment outside. Now that it's cooling off a little bit, you have the opportunity to do some different things outside in these areas. <coughs> he did a fantastic job. Um, it is probably the most well-built Eagle project I've ever seen. Um, so it'll be here for many, many years. Many Eagle projects um, are good for short periods of time, and they just don't do it because the children really have to raise their own money and fund it themselves through fundraising um, and this the qualities it just over time does not hold up um, but I think this one is really going to be able to do that so if you get that opportunity check it out um, it is on the Facebook page um, I don't think I put a picture on Twitter but it is it is up there to look at and it is phenomenal and it just finished up uh, last week uh, yes ma'am uh, with regard to that uh -huh. the Girl Scouts that made the trail I've understood that there was going to be somebody that was going to come and like label planting and plants and stuff to where it could be really an educational um, trail. Yeah, which was a great idea, and we we just have never just really never picked up off the ground. The maintenance piece of it has been very very difficult. We had a uh, that I can't remember what the machines called come through that one time and just basically shred everything in, in its sight. Um, and then I had another landscaping crew that donated their time to come in and clean it up one time for me. Um, but we have not been back there lately, so I'm probably going to have to start over again. But I want to do that. Well, that would be good for the Boy Scout and Girl yeah. Scouts because they were the ones that pretty much initially yeah. started that. That could be part of their <coughs> giving back to the community is, yeah. is a monthly just clean up of that area for, for some of those. Now that, and, that, and you know, just to follow up on what Ms. Kabuk is talking about, and we have another area back behind our mobiles that we kind of created a trail back there. We wanted to make it a nature trail area. Um, and we were going to use it as also another opportunity to do uh, science. Um, so one troop came through and really helped get it all cleaned up. We had um, a bushwhacker come in as what, what, what it was and really clean the area out. Um, but the hard part that we've been, we had to deal with was maintaining the growth constantly. So we're going to have to keep up on it. But yeah, we will follow up with that. Um, Dr. Morrison. Yes, sir. Would you like to speak to the group while you have a few minutes or do you want me to continue? I, I just like to see someone else besides me get the Tough questions, come on. <laughs> oh, they do. Do you, uh, do you, uh, do you, did you want to speak or no? Let me just, uh, okay. I, I absolutely don't interrupt this. Good morning. It's good seeing you again, sir. 